Welcome back to the Perfect Season Podcast. This is a crazy podcast. Talks about everything, all things sports, so and absolutely nothing to do with milk cookies. My name is Alex. We're joined today with Anthony. Uh, and today we're going to be going over week seven of the NFL season. So week seven of the NFL, this is possibly one of the most chaotic weeks that we've had so far. It was interesting. You know, we, we keep saying you know, you want to you want to know a crazy stat line? What? You know what two teams that we would not have expected to have winning records this year have winning records, and they play each other this week? Seattle. Not a primetime. Not a primetime game. Seattle Seattle and New York. Football Giants. Seattle and the Giants. Those are two teams that I would have thrown under the bus early on in the season that are doing a lot better than I thought. Seattle having a 4-3 and record with arguably one of, at the time, one of the worst rosters, even though their roster is pretty much the same. They've gotten a lot of draft capital, especially from the Russell Wilson trade, and they've certainly acted upon him. that. Um, and the Giants, Brian Dable has completely revolutionized that team. And I, never in a million years would I would have expected the Giants to be 6-1 and one right now heading into week eight. I, I mean, it's – who would have thought, like, the New York football Giants – what six and one or six and two? Six and one. Like who would have if they could be undefeated if they beat the Cowboys? If but, uh, but is, if is a big keyword. Yes. And now that we're halfway through the season, we are not even halfway through. The season. Well, not halfway through, almost halfway through. Almost, yes. Almost, almost, almost halfway through. Uh huh. I, I'm calling it. I'm calling the Giants make the wild card spot. Honestly, I would, I would, as crazy as it sounds, I would have to agree. The four, the four divisional winners of last year all have a 500, if not a losing record right now. The Green Bay Packers are currently three and four with a horrible loss to the Commanders at home. Who would have thought? Who would have thought that the Packers organization is? Who would have thought my Bucks would have lost to the Panthers? The Bucks lost to the Panthers. They're now three and four. You know, you know, the, the Rams but... this week. So the Rams didn't play this week. They're still three and three. San Francisco lost to Kansas City. They're three and four. Nobody. That was a good game. Which was which was a very it was a very entertaining game to say the least. Um, there's a lot of teams that were doing really really well last year. Hell, the Raiders won. The Raiders won. The Raiders needed a win. To kind of. Well, I'll be at the Raiders Jacks game. Yeah, and that'll be next. That'll week. be interesting now that James Robinson's on the Jets. Yeah, and that entire back because is Brees Hall. GTN. Brees Hall tore his ACL. Unfortunately, the person he was that having such a good—he was going to win Rookie of the Year. The person that I would have picked to win Rookie of the Year, unfortunately, Brees tore his ACL playing against the Broncos away. Now, in but Denver. I highly doubt this is going to happen. Uh huh. We could—it's like a point one 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 percent chance a Giants Jets Super Bowl. Honestly, man, as crazy as it sounds, this is this is probably going to be the one year. This is this is going to be one of the few years that is the highest possibility of happening. What Giants Jets? Yes, but when I say that, I mean refer- okay. Yeah. In reference to the past few years, this is the highest chance of it happening. But would I go out of my way to say that that's going to happen? No, because I still don't think the Jets are a playoff team. I mean, I, I don't think they are. They've and, shown some signs, but yes, but you also have to realize something. They beat the Broncos 16 to 9. And again, mm-hmm. it's the Broncos. The Broncos offense is horrible. The Broncos defense is another story. The Broncos defense is fine. But here's the thing the reason why the Jets have been able to win games so far is attributed to two things. One, Robert Sala. Uh, and yeah. the second one is Brees Hall. Brees Hall in the past the couple now, of weeks has been a huge game changer for that offense. I mean, now you look at it, and Brees Hall's out, but you got James Robinson. Yes, and the injury, James Robinson is a better Brees Hall. I would have to disagree with that. Um, so you're saying Brees Brees Hall is better than James Robinson with the with the season that I've seen out of the both of them so far? Absolutely. I think James Robinson is a talented running back, and I think he's going to do fantastic with the Jets. But Brees Hall in my opinion, could and still is a potential generational talent at running back. With how he runs, the, the amount of the speed, the strength that he has associated with him, the Jets' offense is, is taking a hit for sure. Mm-hmm. They, they, they've, and they haven't lost their playoff chances, but I would say that they've been impacted. 
signing and trading for James Robinson for a six round pick, an absolute steal by the Jets. Yeah. Would, would I go out of my way to say that that's going to completely absorb? I mean, I would say, no. I would say, I would say a sixth round pick. You're not going to get much for the sixth round pick. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, you never know, but Brady was a Brady was a sixth round pick. Exactly. You never know what you're gonna get at a sixth round pick. Brady was a sixth round pick. So you you honest to God never you never know what you're gonna get out of a sixth round pick. Like you never know what you're gonna get out of any round pick. You mean was it a 23? 2023? Yeah, it's an it's an upcoming draft. So it's a 20 it's a 2023 sixth round pick. The thing is that you never know what you're gonna get out of a draft pick. You never even know what you're gonna get out of an undrafted guy. Currently, the number one running back in the league right now, maybe not in stats, but in terms of fantasy football, Austin Eckler, was an undrafted free agent. Damn. Did you know that? Undrafted free agent. Where did he go to college? I couldn't tell you. I don't remember. (laughs) I couldn't tell you, but I remember his whole story. He was an undrafted free agent. If he wasn't, he was a a, a low-round pick. pick. I want to say he's undrafted. Um, I'll look it up. I might be wrong on that. I'm not too sure, but I think he was but, but he But look at the role that he has now. I mean, he is the focal point of that Chargers offense. And now, just yeah, he was Herber, undrafted. Okay, out of what college? Western Colorado. Oh, and yeah. if you if you look at colleges that are like Western Colorado, like some of the South schools on the West Coast, Western Colorado, Colorado, uh, Eastern like Colorado, the, Northern Colorado, East, Southern all Colorado. those schools. And some AAC schools, you don't get much draft capital from. Mm. Maybe some later round picks, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, or maybe some second and thirds. But I can't recall someone from the AAC going in the first round last time. Besides uh, Ed Oliver. Sauce Gardner, Sauce Gardner. Oh, yeah, Sauce Gardner. Desmond Ritter. Oh, no, Ritter was... Second round. Oh, yeah, he was. But anyway, but, but but back to where I'm going with this. James Robinson is going to help the Jets get back on track, but do I think that they are going to be in the same shape as if they had a pre-saw? Absolutely not. But but to trans to 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 transition away from James Robinson, Travis Etienne has now complete control of that backfield. The guy yeah. averaged nine to twelve rushes a game, a couple catches. Give it give it time. Give it time. He's going to be a good running back. Yes, and I'm slowly eating my words when I said that the whole drafting of Travis Etienne in the 2020 draft was a 2021 draft was a complete uh, mistake. Uh, I'm taking that back. Travis Etienne has proven that he is a valuable asset to have in the backfield, certainly, especially with the chemistry with Trevor Lawrence and everything. He's been able to create separation. If you watch that Giants game, Travis Etienne got his first touchdown of the year, of his entire mm-hmm. career. Actually. Well, because – because he was hurt, he was injured, and 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 in his and I'm, absence, there was I'm no happy point to in. say, I'm happy he didn't play under Urban Meyer. Well, yeah, exactly. But the other thing you have to realize is, with James Robinson still performing pretty decently last year, there's no point in even trying to start Etn. Either. Yeah, there was no point. But <laughs> Etn is going to certainly make watching Jaguars games in the future very, very interesting. And of course, um, I'm going to the Raiders Jags game next week, which could be very interesting. That would be an that's going to be an interesting game. Yeah, I mean, it just depends on on if you guys can get back on track and win another game or not. I mean, we got the Raiders got the Saints this week, and no Michael not, Thomas. It's not a it's not a gimme it's not a gimme win right there. But it's it's sixty forty. You also have to realize that the Saints were still pretty competitive against the Cardinals and the Bengals. And but yeah, look at what Bucks if you and, if you look at. If you look at last week's game against the Cardinals, Andy Dalton threw back-to-back pick sixes. Anthony, what was the final score of that Thursday night game? It was still 42-34. to 34. So despite Andy Dalton still throwing back-to-back pick sixes, the Saints and were still knowing, able to keep that game close. Knowing, knowing both teams, knowing both teams, mm-hmm. both teams can put up points. But what? not trying to say, like, I'm favoring one team. Michael Thomas is hurt. Michael Thomas. Thing, Michael, Michael Thomas. Michael Thomas has been he's out. He's always past, hurt with his hamstring. It's not a hamstring. It's his toe this time. But he's been out for, toe, four, he's been out for four weeks, and the Saints have still been able to be competitive. Okay, and, and, and what's their main reason for being for stay, being able to stay competitive? I mean, you've got the, you, have you have that Taysom weird, Hill, you have Chris Olave, you have Alan Kamara, 
or Alvin, Alvin Kamara, you have their offensive line that's still pretty decent to say the least. But I mean, then you got your defense. Uh huh. Who's hit or miss? Um, what's his name on the defensive line that I can't think of his name right now? Uh, Marcus. I want to Marcus, say Marcus Peters. No, not Marcus Peters. Marcus Davenport. Jordan. Jordan. Jordan Davenport. No. It's going to bother me that I can't think of his name. I will look it up. Thank you. Because Cameron Hayward Bay is, or Cam, Cameron Hayward is Pittsburgh. Jordan. Oh my gosh. It is. No, that's not it. Not Cameron Jordan. Taco Charlton? No. Marcus Davenport. No, that doesn't, that, does, that still doesn't seem right. Marcus Davenport, Carl Granson, Albert Huggins, Jordan Jackson, Jaleel Johnson, Cameron Jordan. Cameron Jordan. Okay, so I was right with Cameron Jordan. So Cameron Jordan. You're right with one of the Jordans. Uh, I got one of them. But anyway, but besides that, I mean, the Saints can keep games competitive. It's not a win for sure for the Raiders, but that doesn't matter because that this isn't this isn't a week eight. But this if you still, look this at is, it, this like... is week seven. This is week seven. So, but Arizona, uh, Arizona, New Orleans was definitely a good break from the horrendous Thursday night games that we've had over the past yes, couple of weeks. God. Very, very competitive. Uh, Arizona is Arizona's a good team. Uh they're excited. Or an average. How about an average? I, I'll go average for right now. I, they're, they're, I'm they're, eating my words away with what I said about Seattle. Yes, I think we all are. Uh, but, Do you know that Geno Smith might be there for a while? No, it wouldn't be the worst case to keep Geno Smith there Drew, for a couple Drew of years. Drew Lock back to Denver? Nah, Drew Lock back to Denver. They'll probably keep Drew Lock just in case to see if they can develop him a little bit more. But Or Geno Smith gets hurt. Yeah, you never know. I mean, Drew Lock is not the worst starter to have, to say the least. He's... I want to take. I'd, I'd rather have Drew Lock than half the quarterbacks in this league. I wouldn't say half. I would say a less than number. Half. I would say maybe at least a good ten. Yeah, no, five to ten. Um. Okay. Let's see. So yeah. No. But but having DeAndre Hopkins back for the Cardinals has been a huge. That was push. a big. It was, a, was huge, a big push. Huge thing. Ten receptions, one hundred and three yards in his season debut uh, against the Saints. Okay. Defense. Now. Now, if you want to talk about last night's game, Alex. Are we worried about New England and if Bailey Zappe is the starting quarterback, or are you rolling with Mac Jones? The thing is that with the, the, the whole quarterback situation in the in with the Patriots is you have Mac Jones who kind of didn't really start like the I season said, too well. He had a Cinderella season last year. I, the thing is that I, I said this about Mac Jones, so this is a good and a bad thing. Mac Jones is painfully average. He He's can, just another Alabama quarterback. He, Alabama mm, quarterbacks uh, wouldn't do not go, produce besides Alabama, Jalen Hurts and Tua. I was about to say the Alabama quarterbacks can't produce with the past two Alabama but quarterbacks. Besides, been, besides those besides two. Jalen and Tua. Uh huh. But Mac and, Jones, but he's only in his second year. So I wouldn't call him an Alabama quarterback. Uh, the average, I'd call him another Kirk Cousins. That's what I would call. Him. No, I'd call him. Yeah, Kirk Cousins. Maybe. I'd go Kirk Cousins. Jimmy Garoppolo. Um, no, because Jimmy Garoppolo can still win games, even though yeah. you think, even though he, you should, you don't think he should. Um, <laughs> the, here's the thing with Chicago Bears: they put up 33 points uh, against the Patriots in Foxborough. Something I never in a million years would have guessed. Um, Mac Jones had a really not the best start. He got injured. Bailey Zappa came in, and he he threw first pass through a touchdown. Yes, he did, especially for this game. But he came into the Green Bay game, lost the Green Bay game, went 2-0 against, uh, what, the Browns and the Lions, I want to say. So two two not really impressive teams. And then you have him come in against the Bears. He can't really get it done. I'm still going to go Mac Jones, as crazy as it sounds. I mean, you, you got to give the guy credit. He he he, he brought him to a super uh, – he brought him to the playoffs. Yeah. Uh, okay, so – But uh, if, you, if you're talking about – are we still talking about the Mac Jones controversy? We can let's move on from the Mac Jones controversy. Um, okay, we can talk about let's 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 go into some of the other games. We had Baltimore, Cleveland, Baltimore won. Yeah, not overly surprised by that. The Ravens have had multiple weird starts, but they're kind of getting on track. Um, Cincinnati beating Atlanta. 
Um, that was Joe Burrow's back. Not overly surprising to see Atlanta lose. However, seeing Burrow throw for 500 yards, four touchdowns, not saying that's abnormal. That's always impressive when you see a quarterback do something like that. Um, Dallas beat Detroit in a game that you could have gotten out of hand very, very fast, but then Dallas. Yes, they could. In. Did you see the hit on a uh, CD Lamb? There was a CD Lamb. There's Noah Brown. Not CD yes, Lamb, but yes, I did. One of the receivers, Noah Brown, and yeah, I yeah, did. that was crazy. Man's did a car wheel and did a car wheel in the air. Um, let's see. I'll say I'll give the Lions one more week than I give up on them. I mean, they play Miami. It's in Detroit. I'm not saying it's a win, but you know, it could it could it could be interesting to say the least. Um okay, aside from aside from from Dallas, Giants beat Jacksonville. Jacksonville again had a couple times that they could have won that game. They were in the lead for a good portion of that game and then having the Giants come back. Giants are six and one. Giants have won most of their games in one score opportunities, typically late in the fourth quarter. Late um, one score opportunities. Yeah, it's usually they they win by a score at most. Um, it's always a comeback win. It's always a comeback win, which is not – it's a win's a win. Yeah. But I want to see the Giants be able to win a game and hold the lead for the entire time. Yeah, like – Who did the Giants got this week? Um, I have no idea. I haven't made it that far yet. But – I want to see the Giants win. I want to see them win by at least two scores. I want to see them hold the lead for most points of the game. At, Ten points like, at max. I, I want to see them. They've they've proven that they can win games. I want them to prove that they can win win games and also hold the lead because that's going to be the important part of getting into the playoffs. Yeah, uh, they're, they're six and one at this point. It's I'm not saying it's guaranteed, but if they keep playing the way that no, they but are, if you think and then Philly's the last undefeated team. Philly's the last undefeated team. And, and, Do you and, see them? Going undefeated. Absolutely not. No. Who do you see them losing to? Um. But we could also see a Philly. What we saw in 2020, how Tampa won the Super Bowl and Stanley Cup. We could see a Philly, a Philly, the Phillies and Eagles Super Bowl and World Series championship. Now, if we saw that, that whole city's burning down. If, uh, dude, if we, if we saw two, two, two Philly teams winning, winning the whole thing. Now imagine if all their teams won. Oh, Philadelphia would be wiped off the map at that. They'll point. be in shambles. Shambles. There'd be no city left. Bye bye. Um, <laughs> no, but Washington, honestly, though, Washington with Taylor Heineke beat Green Bay. Green Bay. I think. I think it's I time think to sound the alarm on Green Bay. Green Bay's not making the playoffs. I, I'll tell you that point. Blank. Unless unless they get something turned around, I mean, Green Bay. In the beginning, you think that they could turn it around completely. Oh, you know, I had a couple bad losses, whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, but I'm just not convincing Green Bay anymore. Aaron Rodgers. I mean, you have Aaron Rodgers, who's a crybaby. And I tried removing my video and then taking it back, but that didn't work. Mm, well, we'll, we'll be fine. Yeah. But you have Aaron Rodgers, who who wants this, that, whatever, and complains about his receivers. He complains about his receivers not being able to catch the long ball. Yeah, but, then but he's, he's, the he's the one. He's the one. He's the one that wasn't there in OTAs. Remember, <laughs> you're, you're, he you're skipped. Funny. He skipped. He skipped OTAs. <laughs> he's he's the one that skipped OTAs, and then he's saying, "Oh, my receivers can't catch the ball. It's you're, your fault because you're not there in OTAs practicing with them." It's it's funny it's funny that you're criticizing a quarterback for not attending OTAs when you look at what happened to the Bucks and the Steelers last week. We don't talk about that. Yeah, I figured as much, and I figured you probably don't want to talk about this game this week either. I um, I was in shambles. I I mean you should. Uh, I, as mean as it sounds, I mean it was not like a. I saw game. the Mike Evans dropped catch. That set the tempo for that. That should have been. That should have been a freaking touchdown. That set the I tempo. Can... What? So that's at the tempo for the game right there. He was wild. If he caught that, that's seven enough. Yeah. But but honestly, I'm gonna keep this short and sweet. Todd Bowles, Byron Leftwich, I want him gone. Anthony, as crazy as it sounds to it's I want them. I think it's I think it's a little bit more than just those. I think you kind of need to address the quarterback situation at this point. Well, Brady, I think 
Brady retires after this year. It's point I, blank. I'd be very surprised if he didn't. Like, I think he retires after this year. Mm-hmm. Part of me wishes he did stay retired. Part of me does, but part of me doesn't. I wish he said retired. Like, I'm a person that likes seeing records being set and everything, if you know. Like, if I'm you know like, what I, I mean. Like seeing, I like seeing records set, but I don't want them being set to such, uh, like, but like being people that say something that eat. no one's done before, like, yeah, he's forty five years old. He's still old, playing man. in the NFL. He's old. Yeah, um, he is. Okay, but so if I, you were to look at it like this, he's you're probably never gonna see someone besides him, Brett Favre, and maybe Aaron Rodgers play in forties. I would agree. I mean. Well, Jerry Rice. Jerry, yeah, but still, like what I'm saying, like at the quarterback position. George Blanca, he was 15 plus, but you know. But anyway, but, okay. So aside if from you, the Bucks, if you're aside, asking me though, aside from the Bucks, if you're um, asking me, this is my last thought, thought about them. Uh-huh. If you're asking me, Brady retires this year. You he have retire. Blaine Gabbard, Kyle Trask. Now, I've been redoing a lot of reading. Some people are saying they don't see. They see our next quarterback not even on the team already from another team, a veteran quarterback coming into the team, or we draft someone. And I've seen names of Anthony Richardson, which I do not want. Anthony Richardson is not a top five prospect. No. I've seen names of Jaron Hall out of BYU. I've seen good things out of him. I've seen DJ Ugalilele out of Clemson. But – he, he, has, with Tampa he, Bay he, has his, he has his good games and he has his bad games. You guys are so over-invested in the win-now situation. You're not going to sit back and hope that a rookie is going to be able to win games. You're going to go out and get the veteran. You're going to trade for a veteran. You're going to sign a veteran that's going to be able to, to keep this win-now culture there. Now, um, okay, so aside from that. Indy lost to Tennessee. Indy lost to Tennessee. And now you got Sam Ellinger starting because Matt mean, Ryan is hurt. Which honestly, as crazy as it sounds, is probably better for Indianapolis because, because he's Sam Ellinger. If he has, let's say, what's Indy's record right now? Three, three, and one. If Ellinger can go, let's just say hypothetically, throwing this out out here, if he can go five and two, unlikely, unlikely, severely unlikely. Or how about four and three? I, I don't know. It, it could be. Two I'm saying five. if say he two, if he gets two, a couple two, good games, if he gets a couple good games in his belt, two and five to four and three, depending on how he can play. I'm saying he gets three to four wins, maybe. And then if you see him, I think he could possibly be the future. Uh, it's it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a smart move by Frank Reich because you have a veteran quarterback that has not been produced. He's leading. He's not. He's not hurt. He's leading the league in interceptions, in fumbles, in in uh, uh, sacks, and everything. I mean, the guy Matt Ryan has just not performed at all this year. You Matt Ryan has would. not. He's not in anymore. I'm sorry, but you know what? Matt Ryan is done after this season. We've seen what he can do. He's he has a, he's a gonna very, re- he has a he's going to retire. He has to. He has a young and talented Indianapolis offense with a decent And then you defense. got people – you got Micah, Michael Pittman. Michael Pittman. T.Y. John, Hilton. John, T.Y. Hilton is not there anymore. My bad. I do not know the Colts offense that well. Michael Pittman, Alec Pierce, uh, Paris Campbell, three very young guys. Jonathan Taylor. Major, Jonathan Taylor, Niam Hines, all guys – under the age of 25 years old, you know, a very young offensive line. Quentin Nelson's still there. So aside from that, Raiders beat Houston. We're not really surprised by that. Kansas it's City, Houston. Kansas City beat San Francisco in a Good. Super Bowl in a in a uh, NFL 2020 Super Bowl matchup. Kansas City dominated, made San Francisco look silly. Uh, Seattle upset, beating the Chargers at home. Uh, one thing, a char- uh, San Francisco. I'm not, it's not San Francisco. Seattle is. Four and three, leading the NFC West, which is something that's crazy. And honestly, with how with how those teams have been playing, I, they're 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 forced to win the NFC West. Uh, and the Chargers, I can't believe I'm saying this, man, but the Chargers so far, to me, by far one of the most disappointing teams in the NFL right now. I would say, I'm still going with what I'm saying. Chargers and Broncos are the two most disappointing teams. I, I didn't want to believe it at first, but then when you look at it. Because you look at the Broncos, 
If the Broncos lose to Jacksonville this week, uh-huh. which I'm I'm taking Jacksonville, they're the better team. They always play better in London. That's a London game. So, yeah, it's a nine thirty more. It's I'm taking more. I'm taking Jacksonville. It's Nathaniel smart. Hackett's fired after the this game most likely because the, the report should. the report came out saying he's going to be fired. He should. And then they're going to trade one of their star wide receivers away. And uh, Jerry, calling, Jerry Judy is a very Jerry Judy wants out. Yeah. Now where he goes, nobody knows. I mean, I, I heard that there's talks of him reconnecting with former teammates, specifically Ahem Ahem Miami. Jerry Judy, Jerry Judy becoming the wide receiver three to an already dominating wide receiver four and Jalen Waddle. Now if, if Judy goes to Miami, Miami set. You got Waddle, Miami, you got Tyreek, and then Judy. Miami was already set with that wide receivers with Waddle and Hill. But, no, but you, know, Judy you know what we didn't dominant. talk about? What? McCaffrey. McCaffrey being traded to San Francisco, honestly, was one for, of the most surprising he got things. Traded, he got traded for a 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Yeah, all this year, I believe. Maybe I think those later round picks are next year. Um, Which, in my opinion, McCaffrey's not worth that many picks. I would say he's he's worth... Two twos and a three. I would say that you're on something right now. Christian McCaffrey, when healthy, is one of the most dominating running backs in yeah. the entire league. No, but what I'm saying is the to San give Francisco up, 49ers to give up. robbed the Chargers. I mean, the, the, the Panthers. Panthers. No, but in, I don't know. It's just I don't honestly think – I don't think giving up two, three, four, five, and six. Two, three, four, five, six. Two, three, four, and six. I think so. I think that was so they still have one, five, and seven. San Francisco does not have a first round pick because of the Miami trade from two years ago. Oh, yeah. So if they don't know draft capital look, this year. San Francisco shot themselves in the foot. I would disagree. This is my last last thought about San Francisco. Mm. There's gonna be a couple things that could happen in next year's draft. Mm. They trade back into the first round. They won't. They have no draft capital to do so. They won't trade back into the first round. No. You don't have a pick until this third day. Maybe, depending on what else they have hidden away, I can tell you. But uh, it's right now. No, it's but it, it, there is a small possible way they could trade back into the first round. So, well, yeah, they had to trade away a player. But Houston, you would like, probably Houston, trade Anthony, like a, Anthony. San Francisco won the trade fair and square. I mean, they yeah, because they got a top five, They got a top five running back. They just got to figure out how to use the top it now. three. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, five. I put five. Um, Who would you say before him? Jonathan Taylor. Jonathan Taylor. Sa- Saquon one healthy. Nick Chubb, Austin Eckler. That's about McCaffrey. It. Yeah, then McCaffrey. Uh, okay, so yeah, Miami Lions. No, Miami Pittsburgh. Miami Pittsburgh was a decent game. Miami won. Two was back. Two was back. Thank you. Flipping God, we needed that. Yeah. Uh, Kenny Pickett. Okay, pick it's good. Terrible. One thing, throwing picks. It's right in his name. Yeah. Uh, Ow. And with all that being said, thank you so much for watching. We'll be back with our prediction video very, very soon. As of very, very soon. I mean, like right now. Um, Leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe. You know the jokes. You know the deal. You know the deal. But with all that comment, being said, what you think was your favorite, favorite game of this past week? Something like that. Whatever. Just comment. A comment helps, you know. But with all that being said, thank you so much for watching. We'll be back real soon.